Thanks to Conor McLaughlin for joining the recruitment team as a channel member. Until the 1st of February, I'm excited to be partnering with HelloFresh UK. Get money off fresh meal kits delivered to your door by using the discount link or the checkout code in the description below. Get 50% off your first box and 35% off the following three, as well as three free gifts. If you want to see more from HelloFresh UK, then check out my social medias where I've been sharing my meals the last few weeks. And what's best, if you sign up, you help support the channel and you can cancel at any time. New season, new signings courtesy of the director of football and a new tactical style at Ipswich Town. I'm going to be doing what you've all been crying out for because finally we've got the players to do it. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 59 and season 8 of this FM23 head coach story with me, Daniel. We are back with Ipswich Town to start our new season today. And it has been a very interesting summer transfer window. I've got to give some credit to the director of football because virtually every first team player he's gone for has been brilliant. But some of them have not got over the line and most of the best ones, unfortunately. So we're going to have a look at the ones that have come in. We're going to have a look at the ones that got away. And we are going to play our first game of the season against Hull City with a slight change of tactic too. So if you're looking forward to all of that, please do put a thumbs up on it. But let's go straight over to the transfer centre because that's what you're all here to see. So first things first, third choice goalkeeper Jack Bonham has retired. We knew that was happening. No big surprises. He's now a terrible, terrible goalkeeping coach. Let's move on to this year. Five more players released. Two of them were involved with the first team a little bit. Etienne Kamara played a few games as a holding midfielder. And Callum Bates came back from loan in January. I think made one sub appearance, but didn't really do a great deal for us. So those are the two main ones that have gone out. We've also had a number of sales from the club. And players that were loaned out a little bit against my judgment. So let's go and have a look at the end of last season. The first one to go was the exciting youngster we gave a chance to at the end of last season. John Dunn has gone to Mansfield, easily could have been in our first team squad. So a little bit frustrated that he's been let go to a club that's newly promoted to League Two as well. So it's not even like he's going to be playing at a higher level. I found that one really baffling as a decision. But if he does get a good year, he should improve no end, which will be great for the future. Let's move on to this season though. Lots of players coming in, but don't get too excited. Quite a few of those are youngsters. The players going out though, not a lot of money raised, but an awful lot of names. Lots of young players going out on loan. A few big earners off the books though, and also an opportunity to get some loan fees. So, director of football started with Jarrett Holtman. He went on a free to Shamrock Rovers. We're still paying five and a half grand a week in wage contributions to him. He's only actually earning 250 quid a week. But it shows you how weak he was for championship level. He's now left the club. He is one of those that has been replaced. And even with the amount we're paying, it's still, what, 12, 13 grand off the wage bill. We can have no complaints. The other left winger that went out on loan is Joe Miley. He was involved a little bit in the first team at the end of last season. Four grand a week and a loan fee from Birmingham City. Just looking further down for any that were stars. I don't really think there were many. But then we got to sort of late July and I got a little bit frustrated because another one of those players we'd promoted to the first team had again been loaned out against our will. Kyle Imbo here, he was someone who did feature a bit last year, really showed some promise, did well out on loan at Shrewsbury the second half of the year too, came back, looked ready for first team football and he's been loaned out again, this time to Blackpool. So we're missing out on a few of those young players I'd really like to integrate and a little bit of that squad depth we'd previously had. The only physical sale of the summer for a fee was Kian Donnelly. He went to Dundalk for about 40 grand. And that for me is absolutely brilliant because he's worth nothing to us. So a really good summer overall. But in terms of getting players out, there's still a few at the club that maybe we would have liked to have seen go or we haven't got a place for. We'll have a look at the full squad in a minute. But let's firstly get through the players that have come in. There's one big money signing. There's another signing for a fee, which is a good player. And I think other than that, there are two or three first teamers. The rest of them are all young players. So we're going to get through those. Then we're going to show you the biggest player that got away and the one that would have solved a lot of our problems. But let's start with David Whitehead, who is the first of the youngsters. He's not that great. He's a striker who can't finish. 
he'd be all right as a right winger, but he ain't going to be playing in our first team. I can guarantee you that. One who will, though, is Evan Simpson. Now, he was actually the second choice in a position. I'll show you the one we missed out on in a minute. But he comes in from Villa at the end of his contract, and he led to a tactical change in pre-season because Ewan Simpson is a centre midfielder and a number 10. So instead of playing with a holding midfielder this year, with Kamara going out, we're going to play with a number 10 instead and play a 4-2-3-1. What that means is we've got a little bit more attacking impetus. As you can see, we've got another attack-minded technical footballer. And while he's not standout by any means, he's pretty good. Physically strong, six foot, good in the air, great engine. He's got everything. And at 23, a former Scottish under-21 international has played football for Charlton, Luton, Villa, Hearts, has got loads of experience. He's someone I'm really looking forward to working with. He was joined just a few days later by Adam Howard. He comes in to replace Jarrett Holtman as the left winger. £235,000 from Shrewsbury. He's a regular international for Gibraltar. He's not a bad little player at all, and he's got more potential to grow into. And looking at last season where we had a big target man in the box, we had that quality. We've now got a big number 10 as well, but we didn't really have that natural width. We were playing with a Ram Deuter in Ferdinand off the right, and then we were reliant on inverted wingers because we didn't have a natural left foot of our Holtman. This guy, I think, solves that problem. Good technique, decent crosser of the ball, and very good physically. He's someone I think could be a real star for us. He does the basics well, and he's experienced. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he's got. The next one to join was Georgie Boyle, who has since gone out on loan. He's another one of those youngsters, another striker who can't finish, but the rest of his game's actually pretty good. So maybe later down the line, as a Ram Deuter, as a midfielder, he could be a little superstar. The next one, though, is the big signing of the summer. Again, it was a second choice because the first one that we missed out on, I was so gutted about. But Jack Johnston was the director of football's plan B, and he's not bad in fairness. He's a striker. He's not the best finisher in the world. He's short, but he's okay in the air, so can play target man if we need it. Also a very good centre midfielder. Reminds me of a better version of Andy Riley, who we had down at uh, Bromley, our last club. Good midfielder, good striker. Places his shots, can play with his back to goal. He's got an awful lot going for him. He's a very good pro and he's versatile. So looking at the players that have been bought in, it's been lower wages, it's been younger profiles of players, and he's another former youth international. So another one that could be a bit of a gem for us. We'll keep our eye on him, but he's going to feature plenty this year. Then we had three youngsters coming on freeze. Hayden Nicholson, he was a 20-year-old New Zealand youth international. He's okay, but not the best personality and maybe not the biggest ceiling as a player. Followed by Marlon Kerbishley, who is pick of the youngsters. I actually promoted him to the first team because he was two and a half star when he came in. He's also very versatile and he's also got a good personality. So I'm hoping that we can feature him a little bit off the bench this year. He's an under 19 international for England. So his ceiling must be bigger than it looks there. I just really hope we can take him to the next level because that could end up being a very good free agent signing. Flynn Gedling Gillam was the next one. He's already gone on loan to MK Dons. Another young left winger, another poor personality, but he's a bit more determined. He's got the physical attributes. I'm sure he'll do all right in the EFL. And then the final one who came in, what, three days ago is Dougie Miller on loan from Rangers. Now, this might lead to a change to our plan first 11 because he is another centre mid. He's a natural number 10 as well, and he is brilliant on the ball. Maybe not the most naturally fit player, but professional. He's got that little bit of flair, that little bit of quality. He can unlock a defence. Maybe he's the sort of player in those home games against bottom half sides who can really push us on and lead us to victory. I'm really pleased to see him come in. I think he's going to be a good player. There is one still going on at the moment as well. It's another youth player potentially on loan from the old firm clubs. Celtic is potentially sending us Jimmy Campbell. And to be fair, he looks really good as a left winger. A bit different this time, plays in off the left on his right foot. Can play centre midfield too. You can see the profile he's trying to build. And that's a good point from Gary Pro. but we've got to be fair. He is trying to build a younger squad. And it's something I complained about last year. We were ageing a bit. We were struggling a little bit. But he's bringing on players who are hungry on lower wages. And he's not minding paying the transfer fees, which I've got no problem with. However, we've talked about all the positives. We've got to talk about the ones that got away because there were a couple of deals he chased this summer that would have been very different. And for Howard coming in and for Johnston, let's show you the first target that he went for for each position. 
So this was the first player that was targeted and it would have led to us sticking with the same shape or maybe playing a centre half who couldn't tackle because Luca Cassani, he was one from the famed Crew Youth Academy. It was about 450 grand a transfer offer but of course he turned us down for Palace and look at him. He's got bundles of potential, he's got a good personality, he's determined, he works all right and he's okay technically in key areas. Very good in the air and powerful too. Just wasn't to be. He chose Palace but the other one was an even bigger loss. Here is the man who was the director of football's first target up front. He was my type of striker, his finishing, his first touch, his dribbling, technique, his determination, his composure and his pace, he had the lot. He was my type of player. He was my little Ricky J. Jones of FM23. He was Mario Ricca, if you want to put the Uruguayan link to Hemel last year. He was just so good, but it didn't go through. He chose to go to Ascoli in Italy instead. I've got no complaints about that, but it would have been about one and a bit million quid and it would have been a super deal. Not to be in the end, we miss out on Andres Pereira. So potentially the best two players we missed out on this summer. We've still got some good additions into the club. So let me know down in the comments what you think of them as we head through to the championship season preview. This year expected to avoid relegation again. What do the media think? We're in that group again. Sheffield Wednesday are the bottom one having been promoted. Then there's a group again of seven or so clubs and any of them could finish anywhere. Leeds remarkably didn't go up last season despite having Moise Keane and Kelechi Iheanacho. So they're going to be stuck in the championship. We're going to be down here in a relegation fight apparently. But one or two more additions, you never know what could change. Let's go and get through to the first day of the season via the club info screen very quickly because the board did agree to a youth recruitment upgrade. For now, we begin at home to Hull City. Where were they expected to finish actually? Just give us a little bit of perspective here. Stages, no, season preview even. They're expected second bottom. Okay, this is a relegation six-pointer on the opening day. Let's go and get through and pick the team for our new tactic. 4-4-2 for Hull. Can we outnumber them in midfield? Well, those of you that have been regulars on this channel for a while will have no surprise as to what I've gone for for this opening day of the season. Where possible, we've stuck with the tried and trusted. It's all part of the building team cohesion. It's all part of building relationships and making sure there's a pretty smooth transition between the old players and new. And that means that for this opening game, nine players were here last season, including all of the back seven. We're not taking too many risks on that front. What is unlike previous clubs that we've been at though, is that we have got a huge shift in tactical style, mainly because of the types of players that have been coming in. So one of the problems we had last season was with our centre halves. Awful ratings from long balls that were coming back at them, trying to be ball playing defenders, but without the players to play it to. So we're trying to play out a bit shorter this time. We've gone to the shorter passing style. We've got an inverted sort of right winger. So we're playing a bit more centrally and a bit more narrow in our attacks. We're also going to slow the pace down. We're going to keep the ball and take care of some of these older defenders. And we're also going to push that defensive line up. No more clinging on at the edge of our own box. We are going to try and take the game to people. You've all complained that we weren't exciting enough last season. We've shifted the mentality up one. We've also shifted our defensive line and our line of engagement up. The slight issue at the moment, particularly with not getting Pereira, is that we haven't really got an alternate type of striker. I guess Johnston could come on and play in the hole a little bit, but he's not really my type. I don't really like the false nine or the deep line forward, but we might have our hand force here. In terms of the rest of the squad, we're looking at players that have either come back from loan or are missing out. Ben Woodburn, not quite good enough now. Toffolo, the same. They're two of the older ones in the squad. Basically, the players who miss out are Frankie Kent in a holding midfield role. He's replaced by a number 10. And then we've brought in a Denaran for Mowat because Mowat's just not good enough after that long-term injury at 34. We've also gone for the natural left winger. There, perhaps we could have carried on with a Sykes or a Woodburn for now, but I felt that was a position where it's worth taking a gamble. Where we're playing fairly narrow, where we've got Ferdinand cutting in, we've got to have one natural bit of width. He's going to do that. So our 11 for today in full is Grimshaw in goal. Still here after all the links in January last season. Leif Davis and Zach Swanson, the fullbacks, with Wolfenden and Edmondson centre half. Harper and Aden around the midfield too. Harper switches from an advanced playmaker to a deep lion one to balance out that midfield three. And then Simpson in as the attacking midfielder in that number 10 role. Ferdinand and new boy Howard either side and George Hurst up front. Can he score more than just penalties this year? 
or is he going to get a bit more service? Let's go and find out. Into the opening game we go. And on paper, this is one of the few games we're favourites for. Here we go then against Steve Cook's whole city side. And if all has gone to plan, we should see a few more highlights here. I am a little bit worried looking at their team though. Ryan Niambi, Morgan Feeney, Gustavo Hamer, Abdul Asima, Josh Lauren. It's a good championship side. I'm not quite sure what they were doing in League One. Or maybe they've just really invested this summer. But it's two decent sides. We're trying to play a bit more. I just hope that we get a better performance. You guys have been pushing for it. I feel that our squad is more suited to it now. We've got a bit more flair. We've got a bit more quality. And of course, we've got some more of those young stars on the bench now to bring on. So a few debutants will probably come on later on in the game as well. But for now, let's try and get a positive performance. 28,000 in at Portman Road again. The fans doing their bit for us. Let's get into the first half. See if we have more of the ball and maybe a few more of the chances. But Swanson plays early on the right to Ferdinand. Chance to run down the line. Lots of pressure on him. Here's Harper to Wolfenden. Again, they should be a bit better in possession. Good ball from Harper. Simpson's in. It's a good save from Bergstrom. Would have been a dream start in the first minute of his debut. You could argue he should have scored it. It was a cracking chance. But he forces a good save as Davis gets the throw in. Headed away easily. Adeneran picks it up. Chance for him in the first team this year as Davis goes back to Edmondson. He goes inside to Wolfenden. Again, we're camped in their half. We're putting pressure on the opposition now. We're higher up the pitch. Good turn, Ferdinand. Two in the middle. Chance to cut back. Second time lucky for Simpson. And two and a half minutes into his debut, Ewan Simpson has scored. We're 1-0 up. We've had three great chances in, what, 150 seconds. And two of them have fallen to Simpson. A brilliant start to this game. And I don't want to get too excited. We're at home to one of the worst teams in the league. But I'd argue we've already produced something better to watch this year. The Simpson to Hurst to Ferdinand. That's sublime. It's dinked over the keeper. Hamer gets it off the line. We are playing Samba football compared to last year. Here's Harper again to Simpson. Into Ferdinand. They can't get out. And we can't stop scoring. I love it. This is going to be a good season. What a sign in Simpson is. Ferdinand's back fit and firing. Oh, it's all great. It's all fantastic. And it's a corner kick just a couple of minutes later. Into the back post from Davis. Headed away as far as Adeneran. Good sliding challenge as Adeneran picks it up on the right-hand side. Cross into the back post is over hit. Seymour away as far as Wolfenden. Here's Davis on the left to Harper. Lovely ball to Howard. He scored a debut goal as well. Oh, it's a fantastic start. We are 14 minutes in. Both of the debutants have scored. All of the attacking midfield three have scored. And we are starting to look like a quality side. Yes, it's not the best opposition in the league. Yes, they're expected to be second bottom this year. But the new tactical style has been embraced in pre-season. And we are getting a real reward for it now. Half an hour gone. It's already game over. And that means we can bring on some of those youngsters later. Debutants are plenty as Davis down the left. Can we make it even better? Just Hurst missing a goal up there now. Into Simpson. He scored again. Oh, it's perfect. Two goals for Simpson. Should have had a hat-trick with that first-minute chance. We didn't have these players last year. We didn't have a Simpson. We didn't have someone who could play that number 10 role. We didn't have an Adam Howard. We didn't have any natural width on that left-hand side. The one that we did have has gone and played in the Irish League now. This is a very different standard of team going forward. The attacking signings have worked and the defenders get to look good. This is perfect. Let's get into the second half. We'll give it 15 minutes and we'll let the two debutants get a big round of applause. Ferdinand's still coming back from that injury. We've got to be careful with him. There's plenty of quality on the bench now. So let's go and get through to it and then we'll make some subs. Well, we're carrying on in exactly the same vein here by the looks of it. A throw on the right just three minutes into the second half. Crossed into Howard at the back post. Both debutants have a brace. This is wonderful to watch. I'm running out of superlatives, but after the struggle last year, after not having quality attackers come in, this is just filling me with pride because I can play the way I want to play. And we're not going to win every game 5-1 as Niambi scores a screamer. And we're not going to score this many goals. We're going to have bad days. But even if at home against the bottom half teams, we can have this sort of freedom and this sort of joy. It's going to be a really enjoyable season for us. We're probably going to end up finishing in a very similar position in truth. I doubt we'll be in the top half or the playoffs. But if we can do it in style and entertain the fans, it certainly will be more rewarding for us. Forget the uh, board wanting to play direct football. As Adam Howard, my word, he has just put a free kick in the far corner. 
a hat trick on debut. That's why we started him ahead of Sykes. That's why I wanted a left winger the whole of last season. Because when we've got a good one, oh, it's something different. Let's go and have a look at the tactics. Who can we bring on? I want to get a debut to Miller and to Johnston. So Johnston, I think I'm just going to bring on up front. He deserves a little run for Hurst there. I'm going to bring Dougie Miller on at four. I think we'll go Adenaran and then Miller can play a bit further forward and we'll have Simpson playing in centre mid. I know it doesn't really suit him, but he'll be all right there for now, I think. What roles can he do in there? He's a bit more of a playmaker. So maybe that doesn't work at all. Can Harper switch? Not really that suitably. And Simpson is a bit more right footed. So he'll be all right. We'll leave it like that. And then on the right, I just want to protect Ferdinand because he's had a long injury layoff. He's not been fit for that long. So Mark Sykes can be our right winger for now. Just looking at what else we might want to do. I think we'll leave it at that. Three changes made, 25 to go. It is 6-1 against Hull. Already the most goals we've scored in a game with Ipswich and Howard's having another go. It is absolutely insane. I'm going to give him a little breather soon because it looks like we're going to need to keep him fit. As Davis has the corner kick, out swinger from the left. The left backs had a really solid game here as well. The worst player on the pitch with a 7.2 though. Not bad going, is it? Out for another corner. Can he assist a goal here? Can Johnston or Miller get off to the score sheet on their debut as well? Who knows? We'll make two defensive changes just to freshen it up. Hume will come on for Leaf Davis. He again is someone who can come in and out when need be. And Rakeem Harper in the middle out. And we'll bring on Alex Mowat, who returns from long-term injury. Five changes made. Six one up. Let's just enjoy the rest of this. It has been a dream start to the season. The new signings are great. The director of football's great. Everyone's great. I'm just happy with everyone. Two expected goals, six scored. Enjoy this day because we're not going to get them often. There's a throw in on the left that's just given away to Niambi, who arguably has scored goal of the game, ironically. Hume heads away the long ball. Seema wins it back. It's a big switch of play for Hull. Doesn't really get anywhere. Not quite sure what Swanson was doing though. It's a through ball to Holleck who might score this. Rounds the goalkeeper. I'm not sure what he was doing. Grimshaw has not helped himself there. It is 6-2. It's a really poor goal. Wolfenden made an error. The error on the right from Swanson and the goalkeeper. They all combine pretty poorly though as Mowat. He's getting robbed now as well. What is going on here? Is it the same mentality problem we talked about before? I can't be too critical because it's a great result. But still some defensive frailties and we're probably going to have to accept that now. We've not got an anchor protecting them. We've not got that more defensive line. So we're going to have to put up with the odd goal against. But if we score six every game, I ain't going to care a bit. Now let's look at the schedule for when we're going to be back. Well, it's easy this, isn't it? One game play, top of the league, plus four goal difference and three points on the board. I'm sure we can back that up every game for the rest of the season, can't we? Let's go and have a look at the inbox. No injury disappointment and we're going to have the cup in midweek. So a few other debutants from the start and let's hope we get that one in from Celtic too. Add a little bit of competition for Howard in case he gets complacent. Transfer deadline day is on Monday the 3rd of September. So we'll come back for that and Sunderland at home. We've got three championship games in the meantime. Might have two Carabao Cup ties if we can get through the first round. But that was absolutely outstanding. I don't think I've enjoyed an opening day more than that for a very long time. Let me know what you think of the change of tactical style, the sign-ins that contributed five goals today. How much credit does Gary Probert get? Maybe it was all Nigel Pearson in the scouting team. Who knows? If you want to stay up to date and see if it gets better or if we start to go backwards after this, don't forget we did have a great start last season and it all went wrong. If you want to stay up to date and find out if it does this year, then subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We'll be back tomorrow with our Build a Nation save. It is a huge, huge episode in that one. A big finish to the season. The biggest game in our history. I hope you'll come and join me for that. Then we'll be back here in a couple of days time for deadline day. In the meantime, you can check out all the other channels in the eye above. The Twitch channel, food channel, podcast, and of course the sponsor HelloFresh too. And I'll see you back here for deadline day. If Gary Probert can keep adding players of that quality, this is going to be a very exciting year. I'll see you next time. <laughs>